Okay, so welcome to College Algebra. How is everyone today? Good, I hope. <laughs> so, there's an exam on Saturday. It's um, at 11. A.M.? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Though, honestly, I would prefer it to be 11 p.m. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, let's see. The way the exam will go is that um, it's at 11. The exam room will be posted in the gradebook um, in the same way that the exam room for the previous exam was posted in the gradebook. It is likely but not certain that you'll be in the same room as before. Um, the format of the exam is that there will be around six mandatory questions. That is to say, you come in, you pick up a packet of six or so questions, <clears throat> these questions will be cumulative and then you do them and once you've done them then you start the redo process so you'll you'll do a relatively short exam or if you like a relatively long quiz turn it in and then you'll begin the redo process for for quizzes 7 8 9 10 and 11 okay so there won't be any more quizzes after quiz 11 um, I'll post a review either, pro probably tonight, uh, and the mandatory part of the exam will track the review quite c closely, which is, to s which is to say that, yes, there is going to be a cumulative portion, but I'm going to sort of narrow it down for you. Okay, so it will be quite in your interest to be familiar with the review. Other questions? Any questions? Right, correct. Other questions? <clears throat> okay, so let's get to it then. So, it is the fifth. And last time, last time we had just said, we had just said that uh, you know, in fact, I'm going to back up just, just a little bit. I'm going to back up to something else and then repeat what we said last time. Okay, so suppose I want you to solve the following equation. 2 to 7x plus 1 is equal to 16. Suppose I want you to solve this equation for x. <coughs> well... If I want you to solve it for x, then sort of the problem that you face is that the x is in the exponent, and you need it to not be in the exponent. So we need x to be out of the exponent. Well, what do you think? How can we accomplish that? Any ideas? Okay, so the left-hand side is written in exponential base 2. And we could reckon the right-hand side in the following way. We could say that this is 2 to 7x plus 1 is 16 to 1. So the left-hand side is written in base 2 and the right-hand side in base 16. And sort of in microcosm, the, the problem that we have is that the left and right hand sides are not written in the same base. So is it possible for us to say, for example, write 16 in base 2? Yeah. How? Base 2x Right. So we could say, okay, okay, so this is 2 to 7x plus 1 is equal to 2 to 4. So 16 can be written in exponential base 2 easily enough. So now Notice, I want, I'd like for you to see that the bases are now the same. And because the bases are the same, that means that the exponents themselves must be the same. <coughs> so, it must be the case that 7x plus 1 is equal to 4. So, base is the same. 
Therefore, exponent's the same. And I'd like for you to observe that it's by that trick that we accomplished our need. So now, this, this last equation, this is something you probably could have solved before even one day in this class. So let's just do it quick. So 7x is 3, so x is 3 sevenths. Any question about this exercise? OK. <coughs> so now <coughs> I'll give you one, just so you can get confident in this. So how about, um, say, 3 to 2x minus 8 is equal to 27. Okay, well, the left-hand side is an exponential base 3. The right-hand side, presently anyway, is an exponential base 27. <coughs> is it possible to represent 27 in base 3? Yes. Yeah, how can it be written? 3 to 3. So we get 3 to 2x minus 8 is 3 to 3. Okay, now they're both written in the same exponential base, so it must be the case that the exponents are the same. So then now we can solve this equation. So 2x is 11, so x is 5.5. Any question about this example? Okay, what if I, what if I um, just barely make it more interesting and I say okay how about how about um, say uh, 9 to 2x minus 8 is equal to 27 so now it's exactly the same it's, it's essentially exactly the same equation except now I, I change that 3 to a 9 now what <laughs> Okay, so what do you mean? Can so you be? It's be three base two times two x okay, so so to use the previous trick directly, we'd want to say, okay, well, could we could we write twenty seven as a power of nine? And it is it is in fact possible to do that, but you you might not know how to do that off the top of your head is the problem. Okay. So, okay, if you can't think about how to do it off the top of your head, is it possible to write 9 as a power of something, and, uh, as a power of some base, and also 27 as a power of that same base? So they're both powers of what? They're both powers of 3. Which is to say that I'll make, the, the first change I'll make is that this is 3 squared, to 2x minus 8 equal to 3 cubed. So I wrote 27 as 3 cubed, and then I wrote 9 as 3 squared. But now these exponents are iterated. And when you have iterated exponents, which is to say, when you have something that looks like this, y to m to n, how do you combine the exponents? You multiply them. So that is y to mn, which is to say if, for example, we had y to 6 to 8, what would be y to 6 to 8? y to 48. So similarly, we have 3 to 2 to 2x minus 8. So to combine those exponents, 
we multiply them. So this would be uh, 3 to 2 times 2x minus 8 is equal to 3 to 3. And now do you observe we have the bases the same, base 3 on both sides. So now it must be the case that the exponents are the same. So 2 uh, times 2x minus 8 is 3. So 4x minus 16 is 3. So 4x is 19. So x is what? 4.75? Okay, so the reason why this works, notice I could have divided by 2 here, and then I would have had, I would have had 2x minus 8 is 3 halves. Well, the reason why that would have happened is because what is, what is 9 to exponent 3 halves? It's 27. That's where the 3 halves comes in. Okay, so now you can see that, okay, Okay, this, this wasn't too bad. This, okay, now that you see the trick, you could probably do one. Okay, but how about this one? So 3 to 2x minus 8 is equal to 28. Now we've got a real problem <laughs> on our hands. Okay, so the way we navigated this before is we said, okay, okay, okay. I know how to write things as powers of two or powers of three or something like that. Okay, this is in base, exponential base three, and this right-hand side is in exponential base 28. And it's not, it's off the top of your head. You probably can't think of some exponent that, <laughs> that would work to get these to, to cooperate with each other. Okay, so, so we need to be able to solve this. So does everyone see that there's a bit of a problem here? This is what we need to overcome today. This is the first order of business. Okay. <clears throat> so last time we ended with the following. We said, okay, let B be a positive number which is not 1. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot B to X. So supposing that B is more than 1, like say 2, then that would mean that the exponential grows to the right. So as we go to the right, it grows, and as you go to the left, it decays. So what is b to 0, b to exponent 0, like 5 to exponent 0? 1. Every exponential goes through this point. So that's the point 1, 0. Uh, sorry, the point 0, 1. Oh, now I've got a little bit of paper stuck in my pen here. Oh, come on. There. Zero. One. <clears throat> okay. So, assuming that B is more than one, that means that to the left it decays. To the right it grows. This is Y is B to X. Last time we observed, ah, the exponential function is one to one. It's injective. So that means that it's invertible. Because it, and that is to say, visually, it passes the horizontal line test. Because it, and because it is invertible, we can invert it by reflecting it across the line y is x.
So we want to reflect it across the line y is x. Remember, what that means is that we're considering a, f a function to be a machine that accepts inputs and produces outputs. Reflecting across y is x is swapping the roles of inputs and outputs. It's like pushing the outputs back through the machine. So that means that if the point 0, 1 is on the exponential, then what point is on its reflection? 1, 0. So this is the point 1, 0. And this feature right here, this is a horizontal asymptote of y is 0. When you reflect it, a horizontal asymptote becomes what? A vertical asymptote of x is 0. Yes. So it will look like this. And then we gave a name for this function. What's the name of this function? Logarithm. Base b of x. <coughs> OK. So this is the definition of the logarithm. <coughs> logarithm. So IE B to X and log base B of X are inverse functions. Okay. So we have a, a couple of immediate consequences. So one, because b to, what is, what is b to zero? It's one. b to zero is one for, it, for any legitimate base. This implies that what is the logarithm base b of one? Zero. zero. For any logarithm, you plug in 1, you're going to get 0. OK. Uh, 2. Uh, the log uh, b to 1 is b. That's not, that's not utterly surprising. <laughs> b to 1 is b. This implies that the logarithm base b of b is 1. <laughs> so for example, what's the logarithm base 10 of 10? One. 1. What's the logarithm base 8 of 8? Mm -hmm. 1. What's the logarithm base 0 of 0? That's a trick question. <laughs> there is no such thing as logarithm base 0. There's no such thing as logarithm base 0 because there's no such thing as exponential base 0. OK. OK. 3. The log base b of b to x. This one's a little tricky to think about until you see it, and then it's obvious. So what is the logarithm base b of b of b to x. It's x. It's x because because logarithm base b, or sorry, exponential base b and logarithm base b are inverse functions. So exponential and logarithm, those sound like complicated words, but let me ask you something a little more simple. Suppose I give you an x, and then I say, OK, I want you to take that x, and I want you to multiply it by 5. And now I want you to take the result and divide by 5. What do you have? You have x. Right? I want you to take that x. I want you to add 10.8. And then I want you to subtract 10.8. What do you have? <laughs> the same thing. So 
if I say, OK, I want you to take the x. Here's an x. And the first thing I want you to do is I want you to compute exponential base 5, so 5 to x. Then, after you've done that, I want you to compute logarithm base 5 of the result. What do you have? x is the same as having done nothing with it at all. It also works in the other order, which is to say <clears throat> b to log base b of x is what? Also x. <clears throat> and 5. These two statements, y is b to x. In fact, I'm going to write that b in red so that it stands out a little better. y is b to x. So presently, presently, the x is in the exponent. So what if we wanted to get the x out of the exponent? Which is to say, if we wanted the right-hand side to just be x. Yeah, that means that over here, it's exponential base b. But if I want to move it, if I want to get x out of the exponent and get this redness on the other side, Okay, then on the other side, it's logarithm base b of y. So on the left, oh, sorry, on this side, it's exponential base b. On the other side, it's logarithm base b. This is just like if we said, well, y is... Uh, x plus 4. If I wanted to get the x by, by itself, what would I need to do? Subtract 4. Which is to say that it's, it's add 4 when it's on the right, it's subtract 4 when it's on the left. Or, if you like, y is 5x. If I wanted to get x by itself, what would I have to do? Divide by 5. So for this one, when it's on the right side, it's multiply by 5. When it's on the left side, it's divide by 5. When it's on the right side, add 4. When it's on the left side, subtract 4. When it's on this side, exponential base b. When it's on that side, logarithm base b. Okay. So what this is, is this constitutes a, it constitutes a means to proceed on equations where you have things in exponents. So let's go back to that question that was ailing us. Right? So we said, OK, I saw how to do this one by playing with the exponents. I saw how to do this one. I saw how to do this one. Then we got to this one, and it was a catastrophe. Okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> writing that equation again. Uh, it was 3 to 2x minus 8 is 28. And we have the same, we have the same need as before. And that is to say that we need x to be out of the exponent. We have the same need as before, except now we have to use a totally different trick, a different technique. So how can I get that out of the exponent? With log, right? Which is to say that presently, presently the left, <coughs> pardon me, the left-hand side is written in exponential base 3. I want to get that exponent by itself. 2x minus 8. But the cost of doing that is changing the left-hand side in exponential base 3 to become what? Log three. Logarithm base 3. And it switches sides. 
So on the left hand side, exponential, on the right hand side, log. So it'll be log base 3 of 28. <coughs> Now, you might look at that, that and say, well, I'm not real sure what that is. <laughs> but for now, it's, it's just a number in the same way that I could, we could write down square root of 13, and I suspect off the top of your head you couldn't tell me the first few decimal places of the square root of 13. Well, it's the same thing with log base 3 of 28. It's a number, but its actual numerical value is not relevant presently. So just ignore that it looks funny. What would you do if you wanted to solve for x from here? Add 8, and then divide by 2. So 2x is log base 3 of 28, uh, and then add 8. So then x is log base 3 of 28, add 8, divide all that by 2. And that's the answer. That's the exact answer. So now you might say, well, that looks kind of weird to me. Well, OK, I admit. But in a sense, that's just the universe penalizing you for saying, why on, why? Why oh why would you be dealing with an equation that in the left-hand side is in base 3 and in the right-hand side is base 28? That's ridiculous. <laughs> so, I'm, so the universe is giving you a ridiculous answer, in a sense. Okay, so let's try one more of these. <coughs> so suppose that I give you, say, uh, pi, because why not, pi to 5x uh, plus 1 is equal to 7. <coughs> so please find the exact answer. So in fact, I'm going to write the pi in red so that in my solution you can see what part is moving. <coughs> so. The equation I gave you, it was in exponential base pi. It was in exponential base pi, and the variables were in the exponent. And we need the variables out of the exponent. So how can we get the variables out of the exponent? It's a logarithm. So we can rewrite this equation. So now that 5x plus 1 is now out of the exponent, but the equation still must be written in base pi. It's in base pi right now. So it must still be in base pi when we're finished, except the movement moving this bit, this offending bit, to over here, it changes from exponential to what? Mm -hmm. To logarithm. So it's logarithm base pi of 7. So does everyone see the bit that moved? OK, so now. Who knows what that is, like, numerically? It's irrelevant. So the answer is log base pi of 7, subtract 1, divide all of that by 5. Any question about this? So now, OK, the actual value of log base 3 of 28 and log base pi of 7, I said, was irrelevant. But now, OK, it's relevant. What if, I, what, if, what if we really needed, say, this value to four places past the decimal? What if we really needed it? How would we go about dealing with it, finding it? OK, let's see. <clears throat> so for example. What is the log base 10 of, say, 
10 to 6. You can do this immediately and without the aid of a calculator. Six. six. Why should it be six? Rule number four. <laughs> right. Right, so I'm saying, okay, take a six and then compute exponential base 10 of that. And then once you've done that, compute logarithm, logarithm base 10 of the result. So I'm saying I want you to take that six and do nothing at all with it. Just give me that six back. It's six. Okay. If that's the case, then what's the logarithm base 10 of 1,000? It's 3. Why should it be 3? Right. So we could say, okay, that's logarithm base 10 of 10 to 3 because 1,000 is 10 to 3. And now it's just like the previous question. So the answer is 3. So then, probably without too much uh, thought now, you could tell me, what's the logarithm base 10 of 100? 2. 2, for similar reasons. OK, how about what's the logarithm base 10 of 0 0.0001? Maybe the negative three? Or negative three? Not quite. Well, negative four. Negative four, right? Negative four. Because you'd have to, to get it to be, uh, what, what is this as a power of ten? T ten to negative four. So this is logarithm base ten of ten to exponent negative four. And now it's just like the previous questions where I'm saying, okay, I want you to take negative four and just give me back that negative four. Thanks. Okay, so you may have heard this of this company. Um, they're, they're somewhat famous and well-known. Uh, they, they're an internet company and they're called Google. <laughs> you, might, you might have heard of them. Actually, the spelling of the, of the name of their company is, actu is, is in fact, uh, a typo. Not, not even a typo, but they just didn't know how to, under, how to write the correct word. So there's an actual number called Google, G-O-O-G-O-L. Okay, and it's, it's a very big number. It's a very big number. So, for example, the number of protons in the observable universe is on the order of 10 to the 80. So it's a, it's a one with 80 zeros behind it. That's a, the, the, approximately the number of protons in the observable universe. Google is a, is a one with 100 zeros behind it. That, that, would mean, that would mean that if we were to talk about protons, that would be that for every proton in this universe, let, let's add another 10 to 20 <laughs> protons for just that one. That's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, a lot. Okay. So Google is an inconceivably large number. Not even, it's not inconceivable. It's just really a lot. 100 zeros. There's 100 of them in there. <clears throat> so... What is the log base 10 of a Google? 100. Because log base, that's the same as 10 to 100, which is 100. So, so that means that you can plug very, very large numbers into log, and it really kind of cuts them down to size understand that this is this is the inverse behavior of exponentials which is to say that if you plug in something even something relatively small into an exponential function it can be very big so for example exponential base 10 if you plug in 80 and 80 is not all that big of a number well that's how many protons there are in the universe 
And there's a lot of those. <laughs> a lot. Okay, <clears throat> so how about let's use a different base. Log base 2 of 8. It's three. So how did how did you come to that? Two to the third power. Very good. So this is you could say that this is log base two of eight can be written in exponential base two as two to three. So three. How about how about log base two of say 1 over 16. Not negative 3. Negative 4. So why will it be negative 4? Okay, so let's do it in steps. This will be log base 2. Well, 16 can be written as a power of 2 as 2 to 4, right? So this is 1 over 2 to 4. And then, 1 over 2 to 4 could be written as 2 to some exponent. It could be written as 2 to negative 4. So the answer is negative 4. Okay. So any question about this? Okay, so this is computing logarithms without the aid of a machine. Now, logarithm base 10 is called the common logarithm. And, <clears throat> wow, <laughs> it's called the common log, <laughs> and when the base is not specified, it's not specified, it's understood to be 10. which is to say log of x written like so. So notice I didn't say log base 2, I didn't say log base 5, I didn't say, I didn't mention what base I'm talking about. But it's understood then to mean logarithm base 10. <clears throat> Similarly, log base e, which is to say the natural number, is called the natural log. <clears throat> and it <clears throat> also has its own special notation, it is written in this way, L n. So L n of x <coughs> is log base e of x. <coughs> okay. So <coughs> that means that we can now look at the machine. So all of you have a calculator. And on your calculator, you can see that you have two buttons. You've got log, L-O-G, which means log base 10. And you have L-N, which means natural log, log base E. <clears throat> Another thing I want to point out is that, <clears throat> is that in our class, when you don't specify the base, you just write log. It's understood to, to mean log base 10. But that's 
that that will be the case in most of your, I, I suspect, most of your uh, contexts, but it's not always the case. So the reason why when you don't specify the base you mean 10 is because of historical contingency only. And it has, it's because we count in base 10, which also is a historical contingency. Why do we count in base 10? 10 fingers. That's it. If, if, if historical contingencies had been different, if we had eight fingers, I guarantee that we'd be counting in base eight. Okay. So, now, if you talk to, if you talk to someone in, in science, like, say, physics or chemistry, and they write log, essentially, invariably, they mean log base 10. But if you talk to a computer scientist, if you talk to a computer scientist, and they write log, and they don't specify the base, then it's in your interest to ask them what they mean, because computer scientists are kind of partial to a different base. What base is that? Two, right? In binary, right? How many states can a bit take? Two, right? So when you count in bi binary, it's zero, one, 10, 11, 100. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you count in binary. <laughs> 101, 110. <laughs> okay, so understand that. But the natural log, the natural log is a consequence of the universe, right? It, it, it wouldn't matter if we turned out to have eight fingers and we counted in base eight, or if we had 12 fingers and counted in base 12. Natural log is the natural log. So that being the case now, I could say, okay, how about this equation? 10 to 4x plus 3 is equal to 47. <clears throat> so how could we find the answer? Right. So it's the same structure of equation that we had previously, and it's the same problem, is that we've got variables in the exponents, and we need them out. So how do we get the variables out? Log. So 4x plus 3 is, it'll still be in base 10. It'll still be in base 10. The given equation is in exponential base 10, but the one that we're going to use is going to be in what? Logarithm base 10. So I'll just write log because that's understood to mean 10. And so now we could solve in the usual way. So x is log of 47 and then minus 3 and then divide by 4. And so now, because you have a log button on your calculator, you can actually do this. So let's, let's use the calculator and come up with, with what this is. So log of 47 minus 3 and then divide that by 4. So log, <coughs> log 47 minus 3 over 4. Okay, so then my calculator is reporting. So negative 0 0.332. In, in a real question, I would tell you exactly how I want you to round and everything like that. Okay. So any question about this? Okay. <clears throat> now. That it's that we still have a problem because if you look a couple sheets back, then we came to we came to the following answer. We said we had an answer that looked like x is log base three of twenty eight. plus 8, and then divide by 2. 
So this is a bit of a problem if I said, and I want you to tell me what the answer is to three places past the decimal. If I, if I requested that of you, you'd be in trouble because have a look at your calculator. Where is the log base three button? Oh, it doesn't have one. <laughs> it doesn't have a log base three button. We were able to, we were able to take care of this because we have a, we have a, a log button. But then how do we take care of this? So, the way it's taken care of is with the following remark. So this is the change of base formula. So now, it's conceivable that at some point in the future we could, we could be visited by aliens, maybe. And if, if they have eight fingers, dollars to donuts, they count in base eight. So what if they fly all the way over here, and they count in base eight, and we count in base ten? Are we just going to have to tell them, oh, you're just going to have to go home? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How would we communicate if we can't even get something as simple as logarithms going with each other? Well, the answer is the following is that given any base, the log base b of x, log base b of x, is the natural log of x divided by the natural log of b. <clears throat> okay, which is to say, for example, I could say, well, what is the log base, uh, say, 2 of, if it was 8, that'd be easy enough, right? You could just tell me what? 3. But if I said, well, what's the log base 2 of 9? Then we've got a big problem, right? <laughs> so how do you write this, then? L of n, 2 over L of n. Other way around. Very good. Natural log of 9 divided by natural log of 2. <coughs> okay, so then the machine says so natural log of 9 divided by natural log of 2 3.16 3.170 I'd like to point out that it makes it makes sense Okay, if the, log, if, if the log base 2 of 8 is 3, then the log base 2 of something a little bigger should be a little bigger than 3. Now, if I asked you to do log of 13, so that's a 13. So you could just type that into the machine, right? So let's do that. So log of 13. So we have that button. Well, that's 1.114. But according to this rule, and if this rule is correct, it should also be the case that the log base 10 of 13 is what? The natural log of 13 over the natural log of 10. So if the universe is just, then this should be natural log of 13, oops, natural log of 13, natural log of 10. So is it going to work? Of course it's going to work, right? <laughs> of course it's going to work because that's how the calculator computes log base 10 anyway, <laughs> right? So now that being the case, that means that we can actually answer this question. So taking this now and, and using this up here, this is <coughs> the natural log of 28 divided by the natural log of 3, and then we'll add 8 and do all of that over 2. And we have that button. OK, so that would be log of 28, natural log of 28 over natural log of 
3, and then add 8, and then divide by 2. And the machine says 5.517. So, in the event that we are visited by eight-fingered aliens, it really shouldn't be a problem because if they're, if they're clever enough to have gotten here, then they've probably figured out a lot of things, including natural logarithm. <laughs> so we ought to be able to make it work. <laughs> okay, good. So have a nice Monday. See you uh, Wednesday for the last lecture.